Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're finding the fraction of an amount. Now the concept here is very simple really. So imagine you've got uh, £180, let's say, and you want to find half of it. Yeah. So it's a half of £180. That's what we're talking about. You're finding a fraction of an amount. Now there's one important thing to remember in math generally, whenever you see the word of, it always means times. So in this case, if you need a half of 180 pounds, what we're actually trying to figure out here is what a half times 180 is. Obviously a half of 180 pounds is going to be 90 pounds, but in terms of the way you do it when it gets more complicated and you can't immediately see what the answer is, effectively you're timesing the fraction by the amount that you're dealing with, in this case the 180 pounds. And if you remember from the multiplying fractions video that I did, if you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, effectively the fraction just multiplies on the top. So what we've got is 1 times 180 on the top, and on the bottom the 2 doesn't change, so that goes over 2. This is because you can kind of put an imaginary divided by 1 underneath there. Yeah, 180 divided by 1 is still 180, we haven't done anything to that. But that means we can now multiply the fractions, you just multiply the tops, 1 times 180 is 180, and then you multiply the bottoms, 2 times 1 gives you 2. But because of the divide by 1, this bottom number will never change. When you're timesing by this thing, it's always going to stay the same. So we don't bother writing in the divide by 1 here, but the point is you just multiply the whole, the amount that you're dealing with by the top of the fraction to get that and then you divide by the bottom of the fraction. 180 divided by 2 gives you 90. So in this case half of 180 pounds would be 90 pounds. Now that's fine when it's nice easy numbers like a half but what happens if you have a slightly more difficult fraction? So we'll find three quarters of 12. So this isn't money now. I mean, you can find a fraction of whatever you like. Maybe it's 12 pounds of flour or something. Whatever you're dealing with in this situation. But you need three quarters of 12. So remember, of in maths always means times. So what you're really finding here is three quarters times by 12. And as I say, if you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, you times by the top of the fraction and the bottom doesn't change. So in this case, 3 times 12 gives you 36, and that's going to be divided by 4, and 36 divided by 4 gives you 9. So 3 quarters of 12 is 9. Now there's one thing I want to point out here. When you're multiplying fractions like this, effectively you're timesing by the top and dividing by the bottom, but it doesn't actually matter which way around you do it. If you want to divide by the bottom first, and then times by the top, it still works. Now you need to be a little bit careful. That doesn't work in every situation, but if you're ever multiplying a fraction by a whole number, it does always work. So whenever you're finding the fraction of an amount, you can always do it like this. You can always do the division first and then do the multiplication. And I actually think it's a bit easier to do it that way. So that was how we did it originally. If we go back to the original question, 3 quarters times 12, this time, if we do the 12 divided by the 4 first, and then times by the 3, you'll see, so it's going to be 3 times, if we don't change that bit, but the 12 divided by the 4 will give you 3, and 3 times 3 gives you 9. So you can see you're going to get the same answer either way, but I think it's a bit easier dividing by the 4 first to get a 3, and then multiplying to get up to the 9, rather than multiplying the 12 by the 3 first to get 36, and then dividing. The reason it's easier this way is because if you divide first, the numbers get smaller before you multiply them back up to get bigger. If you multiply first though, the numbers get bigger before you divide down to make them smaller. And generally it's easier working with smaller numbers, so if you can make them smaller first, that's easier than making them bigger first. But it doesn't really matter, both ways work, I just would recommend that you divide first and then multiply. Alright, I'm just going to do one more example and show you a different way of thinking about this. But essentially it's the same thing, we're not going to do anything different. So this time we'll find two-fifths of 15 
thousand pounds. So again, it means times, and you could think of it as two fifths times 15,000 and then doing the multiplication. But another way to think about this is if you want two fifths or 15,000, if you first of all find out what one fifth or 15,000 is, you can use that to find out what two fifths is. And sometimes it's easier to think about it this way, but they both, both methods work, it's your choice really. So if we say, actually let me write this out slightly differently. So that's two fifths of 15,000 we're trying to find. Now one fifth of 15,000 is gonna be 15,000 divided by five. Yeah, if you're finding a fifth of something, you just divide by five. So we want a fifth of 15,000. Well, 15 divided by five will give you three. So 15,000 divided by five will be 3,000. So a fifth of 15,000 will be 3,000. And if we know what one fifth of this is, finding two fifths is just gonna be twice as much. So two fifths of 15,000 is two times 3,000, which is just 6,000. And as I say, some people prefer to think about it that way, that way. So whatever kind of fraction you've got, if you find out what one of these things is, in this case, one fifth, and then multiply by the top thing to get that. But essentially you're doing the same thing as we did before. Yeah, you're starting with the 15,000, we're dividing by the five, and then multiplying by the two gives you the 6,000. My name is Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Math. Thank you.